Hello and welcome back. And I know it's been a very long time since I posted any updates. I've been really busy doing things both inside the garden, getting my outside garden planted, doing lots of extra things. So I know this video is a long time coming. So this is going to be a combined greenhouse one year review slash garden update. So um, just to start, it's been just over a year since we completed our greenhouse. And I think there's probably very, very, very little things I would change. Um, I am definitely happy that I got the sunshade for it. I had that this year. And we do have a south-facing greenhouse. So anybody out there that has a south-facing greenhouse that gets tons and tons of sun, um, you can see it's, it's pretty open here. There's no trees to really shade it. Um, and this time of year, today's a cloudy day. It was a little rainy overnight. Um, but on a typical sunny day, um, we'll get a good 12 hours of sun on this. The sun doesn't really get down on the greenhouse until probably close to 7.30ish, 7, 7.30 by this time of year. So the sunshade definitely helps on the really hot days. I can actually stand in there and work. It's still warm, but it's not to the point where, you know, you almost can't breathe. So that's definitely one thing I would recommend. Um, one little mishap we had is you can see those two little white spots there. That's actually some caulking we had to put on some holes. Um, we used these little, I don't know if you can see them, these little tech kind of nails to secure our plastic to the wood. And in error, we actually had these pushed down against the top of the wood instead of the side. Um, so on a windy day, those did create a hole. Um, so we probably wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't recommend putting those anywhere where it's gonna make a bend in the plastic. Um, but so far, that's the only hiccup I've had in the plastic. This is specific uh, UV plastic that I got on Amazon. I think I had posted a link in some prior videos. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, my mulching around the outside is getting a little bit weedy, but that's, that's fine. Um, I didn't necessarily intend on keeping it up, but it does help with keeping the weeds down on the outside. We mowed, so there's a little bit of grass in here. Um, but so far, everything's holding up really nicely. Uh, the windows, you can probably see, have a little crease in them as the wood settles and things expand and shrink and whatnot. So that's fine. I mean, this time of year, it's no big deal. Um, in the winter, as I had in one of my other videos, we did have to winterize. And I will not grow again this winter. That was another mistake I made. Um, but you can see the shade cloth is a little bit large for this greenhouse. This greenhouse is 12 by 7, and I can't remember the size. I think the size that I got was 12 by maybe 16 for the shade cloth. So side to side is fine, but likewise, it's a little bit long. So I do have to fold that up at the top. Um, and we secured it down just with little stakes like this. I didn't want to have anything really up against the plastic itself for when it gets windy, you know, just anything to to damage the plastic. But like I said, what I showed you, those two little spots or holes that, you know, we kind of caused by an error just in how we, you know, put those nails in. So that was our fault. But otherwise, I'm very happy with the plastic. So that's holding up well. So everything exterior wise is in very good shape for one year later. I don't see any discoloring of the plastic. The plastic, as you can see, is still pretty clear. Um, so all in all, the outside part is very satisfying. Um, I, I am still using just a water jug to keep my door open. So I would like to figure out something somewhat permanent to, you know, maybe like a latch or something. But again, I don't want to put anything into the plastic that I don't have to. So for now, the water jug works. I just try not to trip over it. So as far as the inside, as I did um, probably about a month or so ago, we put in this floor. And that would probably be the one big change if I ever built another greenhouse, which that could potentially be in the plants. Um, I would definitely put down some sort of weed fabric, which I do have weed fabric underneath this. And I, I would definitely put down a different flooring. I would not build the greenhouse on top of just, you know, the the grass out here. It just, it made such a mess. Um, 
I do still get some, as you can see, some grass still peeks through in the creases here. And there's actually some down here. This I actually have to pull up. And in sections where I have pulled some of it up, like in this corner in this area here, it didn't seem like once I pulled it up, once it started to come up, that it didn't come back as quickly. Um, like this section over here, this used to actually be strawberries. Um, and I did have to pull those up. You can see one is trying to, to poke through. But I did pull up quite a bit. And it seems like ever since I put down this weed fabric, which you can see a little bit of overlapping there, and these rocks, that I really haven't had any problems with weeds in here. So that has been a, a huge, huge bonus. So that is probably the most major thing I would change, you know, if and when the next time we build a greenhouse. Um, and it makes it look so nice. And as you can see, if you've seen some of my prior videos, I've definitely decluttered in here and it looks so much nicer. It's, it's much more workable and it just looks a lot, you know, a lot nicer. So I really do like that. Um, the shelving is holding up great. No complaints with that. I have, um, some stuff, very little things in here. Everything's basically outside. I do have my little farm stand at the road, so I do have plants out there. Um, and I actually have gotten rid of quite a bit of my overabundance of plants. So I really don't have a lot in here. This is some spinach that I planted, um, I think maybe the end of last week. I was on vacation from work last week, so I got a ton done. And like I said, I apologize because I haven't been doing videos as often as I would like. And you'll see why when I show you the garden. Um, but this is some cabbage that I'm trying inside and this is some broccoli. But for now, oh, and these are um, some onions. I had some extra onion bulbs that I really didn't have room for, so I didn't want them to go to waste. And I've just been basically repurposing like you can see, this is actually the cover to um, another container I have outside. So we'll look at that in a few minutes. But just repurposing as much as I can. Um, this, I just got rid of the stuff in here yesterday. There was some uh, baby spinach in there. So I'm going to reuse this. Probably plant some more lettuce or some spinach. And this is just another tote that I found in my shed. So again, I'm repurposing that. This is going to have some peppers in it. Um, I have an abundance of sweet peppers and hot peppers. Um, so that is what that's going to be. And just organize this corner a little bit more. Organize this. I got this little tote just at Walmart. Just to put all my tools and all my paperwork and my labels and just miscellaneous stuff. I hated having it up here. It just, it looks sloppy. So I feel like now I'm very happy with how this looks. You know, a year later, I really feel like it looks nice. It, it's very, you know, neat and tidy, and that's just how I like to be. Like, the whole clutter thing just was driving me nuts, to be honest with you. And I got these, these little tractors. Let me get this out of the way. I found these in our shed, so I thought, oh, these are kind of cute. They fit. So I have this one, and then <clears throat> I have this one over here. So just trying to dress it up a little bit. Um... And lastly, as far as inside stuff, I had bought this um, Thermapro when I first got the greenhouse. I have the sensor inside the house. And honestly, this one, I don't know if it's just because it's, it's too far away from the house, but I just don't think it reads very accurate. Um, it seems like the inside reader goes blank a lot. And again, I don't know if it's because it's going through you know, this, this plastic here, it seemed like at first it worked really well, but, um, this other one that I have, Shane actually got it in a state sale and it's the same idea. I have a sensor in the house. I think that one reads so much more accurate. And again, I don't know if it's because this one's kind of suspended, so it's not as close to the plastic as this one. But when I look at the temperature in the greenhouse, I go by this one. So the Thermapro one, I'm not going to say, you know, don't like it. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it because it could just be, you know, the position of where it is. Maybe it's not meant to be that far away and go through plastic and then the wall of the house. And I think this is a lacrosse. It's an older one. Like I said, we got it in a state sale for, I think we paid like 20 bucks for it. But that one seems to be the most accurate as far as temperature. So if this one says it's 96 in here, 
chances are it's pretty darn close to that. And it's funny, this one will say 96, and this other one in the house will say it's like 54. Like, they're just very different. So, again, I'm not going to knock that because it could just be the conditions. So, overall, very happy with everything. Everything's holding up great. Um, I did have to replace just a couple of, um, you can see I've got some gray duct tape here. Some of the gray duct tape was getting a little tired, so I just bought some Gorilla Tape and just replaced that in a very few spots. Um, that's just to protect the plastic again from the cattle panel. But again, you can see that's peeling away just a little bit, and that one is. But considering, you know, the, the temperature that it gets in here, hot, cold, hot, cold, everything's holding up great. So I'm very happy. Um, like I said, there's very little things I would change. Um, so I hope that helps and I'll put a link up above to my original cattle panel greenhouse build so if you haven't seen that if you would check that out that'd be great give you some ideas and you know like I said this is one year later and things pretty much look the same so I'm very happy with that so now that I've done my one year review let's check out to see what I've been busy doing so this is everything I currently have growing outside the garden these are some catnip plants that I will dry for my friend Charlie's kitty hugs. So that's all for her. This is some mixed lettuce, which, eh, I haven't been very happy with how my lettuce is growing. I think it's been too warm, maybe. And plus, I think some of it, I didn't plant the seeds down far enough in the soil, so the roots almost came up a little too close to the surface. So that was probably my fault. And these are some sweet and hot peppers. Um, where I have the onions planted inside, where I told you I was repurposing the top, this is this is the top that it belongs to. But I wasn't using it because this obviously doesn't need to be covered. So that is where that comes from. I've got some miscellaneous flowers, some black seeded Simpson, which actually looks really good, um, some mums, and this is just um, my overage that I, I haven't put out at the road for plants. So you can see I've got lots of tomatoes, um, peppers, these are some herbs and some flowers. Um, this is supposed to be arugula, but again, I think I might have planted the seeds too close to the surface, so they kind of, the roots just kind of grew a little funny. So again, my fault. And over here I have more overage. As you can see, I have a lot. And a lot of these um, I am going to find homes for uh, around here. So. My goal is to waste nothing and plant everything that I have, so at least I can say I tried. <laughs> I know I planted way too much. Um, these are some flowers. These are my perennial flowers that are going to go into a new garden I plan on building. We have a bird nest out front that once the birds are gone, I'm going to build uh, my little puppy memorial garden. I have one now, but I can't see it because everything's so overgrown. So I'm going to build a new one, and that'll be my puppy garden and these flowers will go in there so they'll come up every year and over here I have some red and some white onions that I planted early in the season they're getting very weedy um, I did try to clean up some of it over the weekend but it's it's hard got to keep up on it so I know I got to get on that but these are looking good so this is everything that's outside the greenhouse and since I had such an overabundance of tomatoes I added a new little makeshift garden, which is over here, just across the driveway. We had a spot that was kind of bare, so we tilled it up. There used to be a bush here, so we, we tilled this up. The bush is actually underground. All the roots and stuff have been cut off, and I just did this. So just a little makeshift garden, just to use up more plants. So I have 12 more peppers in here and I have six, or excuse me, 12 tomatoes and six more peppers in here. And the fence is just a fence that Shane's brother got for free. Someone was giving it away up the road. So I repurposed that. Free is good. I like free. So I just, you know, just to kind of keep the critters out as much as possible. So it's nothing fantastic or nothing beautiful. My door or actually it's not a door, it's just to keep again critters out, is just an old plastic um, cover from a Tupperware. So just trying to 
take up as much space as I can with what I have. So let's go check out the main garden now. So here is the main garden. And as you can see, I had been very busy the last several weeks, so I have everything planted, which I'm very happy about. And we even got, Shane got me a new batch of mulch for my walkways. So we freshened that up. We did that um, the middle of last week. Like I said, I was on vacation last week, so I did get a, a ton of stuff done. Um, and these little things that look like grass, that's actually um, onions I had from seeds. So I'm actually really happy with how they look. They didn't look that good at first, but they've kind of perked up. So I'm very happy about that. I've only done onions from seeds once and it wasn't very successful. So very happy with that. I've got my pole beans little makeshift poles for them to climb up. Um, over there, there's some bush beans. I have some peas here, which I don't know if the seeds just aren't good seeds. I only have a couple coming up, so I might have to plant some more of those. These are um, under this trellis here, my little, again, makeshift trellis to climb, is um, some turnips, which I just actually thinned out the other day. So those are doing good. My cucumbers, trying to train them to climb this way and not this way. This is my corn. The corn you see in the middle, that is actually popcorn for my bird. This over here on the right, or excuse me, the left of that is the people corn. We kind of joke that the corn for my bird is taller. So Shane always says corn knee high by July. So I think we're going to make it. We're at uh, almost the end of June. So everything's looking good. And over here in these pots, I have some squash. And if you can see, I have, I don't know if you can see that, I got two tiny little summer squashes starting to sprout. So I'm very happy about that. So this is a summer squash. This is summer. This one and this one are winter. I'll show you briefly outside the garden. I have my potato box, which is looking good. Um, so trying that. Never done potatoes before, so we'll see how that goes. I got a bunch sprouting, so I'm happy about that. And moving along, in the middle here we have some cabbage, we have some cauliflower, I've got some little parsley here, and I think this is broccoli, but I could be wrong. This was, these two plants weren't marked. But they looked good, so I threw them in here, so I don't know what's going to come out of it. It could be cabbage, it could be broccoli, it could be cauliflower. I know, I, I, have, I do have a couple things in the greenhouse that weren't marked either, so they're kind of like mystery plants. Um, my garlic, which the, the row over here, the closest row to me, didn't do good. It was the Aja Roja, or Aja Rojo, I don't know how you pronounce it. It was just a sampler pack that I got from Burpee, and that one... I don't know, it just, maybe it just doesn't like this environment, but that one just doesn't look good. The other two, the Georgia Crystal and the Purple Glazer, look amazing. So I'm happy about that. So I'll definitely have an abundance of garlic. Um, and actually I have a couple of the onions that I had planted in the greenhouse. I still had some extras, so I do have a couple of those bulbs here. As mentioned, I have some mystery plants, this tomato and this tomato weren't marked, so I don't know what variety of tomato they are but I didn't want to let them go to waste, so those went in containers. I do have some Genovese basil here, and this is some sweet basil. And all my tomatoes, which I have them all marked. I have two rows of Roma. I have brandy wine. I have Amish paste. Um, I do have some beef steak, some pink hybrid, some gardener's delight, some Rutgers. And if everybody watched the video where I lost my entire crop to a frost, these three plants right here in this corner were part of the frost, the great frost of 2022. These are cherry tomatoes, and these are the survivors. And as you can see, I already need to trim these. They're getting huge. They are turning into bushes. But this one has a flower on it already, so I'm very happy about that. But... <coughs> Those were the three survivors from the Great Frost, which I didn't think I'd have anything, and they really have exploded. So, oh, and I have some more little container peppers over here. 
So that's all that I have been doing. Been very, very busy. Um, but hopefully, you know, we got the, yet yeah, today, or yesterday, excuse me, was the first day of summer. So that can only mean it's going to get nicer and, you know, keep things growing. Oh, and one last thing. my I skipped right over it, sorry. My oregano here has exploded. I've actually already harvested some of it. I'm going to harvest some more because it's just taking over the whole garden. And stupid me never realized oregano is a perennial. So I'm going to have to find a new home for that for next year. Because I would like this to be a tomato garden. This is the first year I've done this whole bed as just tomatoes. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully everybody has enough space. I'll definitely keep everybody trimmed up and tidy. So looking for a good season. And lastly, since I was doing a greenhouse review a year later, this is a uh, Aqua Joe telescoping water sprinkler that I got for my garden last year and I love it. Would highly recommend Sun Joe products, any of their products. My tiller is actually a Sun Joe and I love that too. They're very well-made products. I just put this on at night. It's got a bunch of different settings. Um, I did buy a little nozzle for it so I can just unplug it and plug it in when I need to use this. Um, but highly recommend the Aqua Joe products. The thing is great. I just turn it on and there's a, you know, there's a mist setting, there's a fan, there's, I think there's six, five or six. And this can angle so you can put it up, you can put it down, and you can, you know, set it how far you want it to go, but that thing's awesome. So, that's the last of my one year review for the products that I have. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. And hopefully next time it won't be as long, but I'm grateful that you all come back. And if you have any questions or comments, or you just want to say hello, please say hello below. I would love to hear from you and hear how your growing season is going, where you're from. So again, thank you for watching, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Take care, and happy gardening.